Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Now before we get into today's episode, we have a few milestones to mention. Not only is this the season 4 finale of Film Learning, it's also our 300th video on this channel, and coolest of all, we have now passed 50,000 subscribers. So guys, a celebration video is definitely on the way. My god. Now I did plan on releasing our upcoming Dr. Alchemy pack for the season finale, but I've ran into a few hurdles, one of them being the holidays and my son being mobile now and crawling all over the house. Which of course means baby proofing. And that my friends, took some time. For those of you who don't know, this is my son Dexter, and here he is playing with my dog Peg with a ball. Isn't that cute? Anyway, on to today's quick tip, which comes via Simba and this request. Could you do a quick tip on render settings? Yup, so let's get into it shall we? Now gang, I'll be discussing my personal preference for rendering both effects footage out of After Effects and rendering videos out of Premiere Pro for upload to YouTube to get yourself a nice sharp image. Now the formats I render out should be universal, so if you don't have either of those programs, you should still be fine. Ok guys, here we are in After Effects, I've got my comp set up ready for rendering. All this is is last week's Christmas template for the Filmstro episode. I actually made this using Video Cup Pilot's ugly sweater preset, if you like I'll leave a link to download this in the description and just have a play, it's pretty fun. So all I'm going to do here is just add this comp to the render queue like so. Head up to composition and add to render queue. And as you can see, we are now in the render queue with the default AVI format. Now if you like AVI, more power to you. The file size is huge and sharp, but for some of you, it might be hard to work on a low powered PC with an AVI file that's really really big. So let's jump into lossless and have a play. Once we're in our settings, I'm going to click on the drop down menu for file format and select QuickTime. Now this option won't be there if you don't have QuickTime installed, so I recommend you go and do that. From there, my personal preference is the animation codec. It's essentially an uncompressed format that gives you a great sharp image with plenty of detail. But much like AVI, the file size is kinda on the big side. But if your PC can handle it, I would totally render out using QuickTime and this animation codec every time. Now if your PC is a little light on power, you can always just select the H.264 format and keep the quality all the way at 100. It won't be as sharp as the animation format, but the file size will be much smaller and easier to manage. So here's a quick side by side comparison of both files. You can see that the H.264 one is a little milkier and it's not quite as sharp, but the animation codec has all those colors from the comp and it's nice and sharpish. If you were going to upload just the H.264 directly to YouTube, you'd be fine, but if you're going to take it into the editing suite and then render it out again, you may find that the quality loss is a little bit too much for you. So those are my render recommendations for After Effects, but how about uploading to YouTube? For this, let's head into Premiere Pro. And in some sort of Inception inspired crap, let's render out the episode you're watching right now. Let's head to File, down to Export and Export Media, or just use Control M. From there, let's choose our format. I'll head down to H.264, then in Presets you can see I have my own custom preset called Film Learning. But let's build one quickly from scratch. So let's set the preset to Custom, and then we'll scroll down and make sure that you inspect those basic video settings, then make sure they reflect what you want to export. It's full HD, the frame rate's right, so let's move on to the real tipping point, bitrate. As you can see, our bitrate encoding is set to variable bitrate one pass. Now there's three options here, CBR, which stands for constant bitrate, and the third option being variable bitrate two pass. I always set mine to variable bitrate two pass, which does take a little longer to render, but in my opinion, you end up with a quality video and audio that's a lot smaller in size than CBR. Is it sharper than constant bitrate? No, but the difference is hard to spot. So let's set that to VBR to pass. Next, let's set the target bitrate to 15.5. Now you can set this higher, but personally, I think that any higher is just adding size to your file. As you can see, if I increase it, that file size just starts to climb on up. Our next step is to set your maximum bitrate, and that I'm gonna set to 19. So the idea is, the target bitrate is what the video strives for, but if it can, it will get up to that 19. Our last option is to tick Render at Maximum Quality. Now if you do want to save this preset for later videos, it's really easy. Just head up here, 
click Save Preset and name that sucker. That way you can skip this whole custom preset steps all together and render your little heart away. So there you have it gang, my personal settings for rendering out nice sharp videos. Sure if you render out your effects footage with QuickTime animation, your file size will be huge, but the plus side is it will look awesome when you bring it into your editing suite. As for Premiere Pro, keeping that bitrate at 15.5 will keep your video sharpish, but still manage to keep your file size relatively small. Most episodes of Filmland are around 800 meg to 1 gig, depending on their runtime, and I personally think it's worth maintaining that higher bitrate, especially for effects work and tutorials. Sure, it might take longer to upload to YouTube, but your subscribers will appreciate it. Right, gang? Well, gang, that's the end of Season 4 of Film Learning. Be sure and stay tuned for Season 5. We have some awesome tutorials lined up, a bunch more download packs like Strike. So if you haven't already, be sure and turn on notifications for the channel so you don't miss a single video. And speaking of videos, if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. If you're new here, hit my face to subscribe right here. Social media crap, as always, is above my head, and the entire Season 4 playlist is sitting right here somewhere. And for the last time in Season 4, keep learning.